Good morning, everybody. Hi there. Thank you for joining me here. So uh, today, uh, I know that many of you are familiar with developers with writing applications, but I'm going to talk about a change that's going on in the industry, and a change that's probably a little bit of a different idea from how you've been developing before. And this is basically a change in the network itself. And the network, the network infrastructure, and the technology in the network is evolving so that it's programmable. The network is evolving so that the network actually has APIs. And the thing that I want to talk about today is how these APIs can help app developers as well as help DevOps professionals as we're rolling out our next generation of systems. So before I jump into that, I want to talk about something a little bit personal, which is when my parents came to the United States 50 years ago before I was born. So they lived in South Korea. They never left their country before. And they were moving to the United States to try to make a better lives for themselves and make a better lives for the future that they were, for the children that they were going to have, and me being one of them. Now, it's really interesting to think in 1965 what it meant to move from a country like Korea to the United States, you know, just moving anywhere. And many of you are building your own careers and moving around the world and everything today as well. Everyone's working towards making a better life and trying to impact society. But when my parents moved to the United States, first my dad came to the US, a couple months later my mom came, and her entire family and friends went to the airport to watch her get on her airplane as she got on. Because back then, when you got on an airplane to go away, you probably weren't coming back. It was a one-way ticket. And she got on that airplane to go, and you know the airplane tickets were so expensive. She probably wouldn't come back to the US for 10 years. It would depend on how much money they made and what their lives were like. Back then, the only way to talk to each other was to make a phone call, but you had to reserve when you were going to make that long-distance international phone call. So they would call on Saturday at you know, 5 p.m. and talk for two minutes. And then the main way they would write is to write letters by hand and send airmail. That's 50 years ago. That's not that long ago. And look at all of the ways that we're communicating today, all of the applications that we're using, and how far we've really come during that time. Now, one key to this evolution of how we've gotten to where we are today is the network. And if we take a look at the network, there's been a number of evolutions in the development of the network. So the network had been developed over many years, but a big thing happened in around 1990, which was the emergence of the World Wide Web. And here we are at Web Summit <laughs> many years later. So if you remember before the World Wide Web and after the World Wide Web, that not only provided connectivity for devices, for computers, for data, but it actually transformed how business is done and a whole new web economy had emerged. And then as you keep on going, as Joel was talking about software is eating the world, right? So Mark Andreessen's line, software is taken over in a crazy way. And then came the next transition, which was for mobility. So all of a sudden, there were mobile devices, and developers could write apps for mobile devices. In 2008, there were 500 apps in the Apple App Store. Today, there's 2.2 million apps. But what that App Store did in 2008 was it gave all of us, all of you developers, a way to get your apps out to the world. That was huge. And then to go on, things are still evolving, and it's so exciting which is that there's another transformation happening in the network. The network doesn't sit still, you know? And what's going on now is that the network is actually becoming programmable down to its core. The network actually has APIs, and these ap APIs can be used by all of you when you're writing your applications. So let me talk more about that. And the very cool thing about apps and APIs is that they're not just about techies. It's not just about people who can afford the technology in the highest way. But now apps and APIs are transforming daily lives. More than 4.5 billion people have phones of some sort. And they're texting, or they're using the web. And that's only going to increase. 
So everybody uses it now, and that's the responsibility of our app developers, is to take care of all the people, not just the techies. So if we take a look at what's happening is we're impacting people's lives through the applications that we write that are on the devices that people use, and then we have the whole cloud and all the cloud services at our disposal as well. So powerful. Our developers are so empowered. But more and more, our applications really are depending even more on the network. It's stressing the network in all different ways, and there's new things that we're putting into there. And security has to be built into that network. So the whole emergence of network and security together is fundamental to this next generation of experiences and applications that all of us are going to create. So if we take a look now, I want to encourage you all to think of the network as your platform for innovation. I want you to learn how to use the APIs in the network to write your next generation of apps. And this is what's going to allow us to do augmented and virtual reality across a network. It's going to allow us to do AI and machine learning. And the network itself is actually doing AI and machine learning. Cloud computing, dependence upon the network and enabled by the network. With IoT devices coming along, there's also the emergence of edge computing, a new place to put code into the network. So this is huge. So the network is your platform for innovation. Now, why would developers care about network APIs, or what can the network APIs do for you? There's these five areas that I'm going to talk about quickly. One area is network performance. The next is value-added services for applications. The next is adding security to your applications. Another is net DevOps. And then multi-cloud development. And let me explain what those means. First of all, network performance. How many of you have used your mobile devices? We're doing a video conference and then had a poor connection. Who had it on like this trip? or last night in their hotel room. <laughs> Everyone does it. What's that problem? You wrote a great application, there are great networks, and yet you're getting poor performance for your application. That's a failure of communication between your application and the network. There's actually technology that's been around to do it, but we have not yet connected apps to it, which is, let me go forward one, which is quality of service. So Cisco's actually partnered with Apple and what we've done is allowed iOS developers to just go in and use QoS, mark your packets and say, this packet is best effort traffic. This is background traffic. This is real-time voice. This is real-time video. Just go in, put in a few lines of code, and mark your traffic. And then what we've done is partnered to actually implement that throughout our networking equipment so that we can prioritize the right apps accordingly. So if you're an iOS developer, go out, put these few lines of code in your app, mark your traffic, and then you can actually bring it to DevNet. I run DevNet, which is Cisco's developer program, and we will fast lane validate your app. And when your app is fast lane validated, then it's allowed to be prioritized into a network. So iOS developers can go and fast lane enable their app at developer.cisco.com slash Apple. And then solutions providers, you can now create solutions, for example, for a hospital. Imagine in the hospital, you have your Wi-Fi network out there, and you have some critical patient monitoring application, and then you have guest Wi-Fi services. The most important one is that critical patient monitoring equipment. You can put that in the fast lane. So it shows a way that the network is coming together. So the next area that I want to talk about is value-added services. We all think about the network as Hello? OK. We all think about the network as the network provides connectivity. Of course, the network provides connectivity. That's what it's there for. Um, but let's think about our Wi-Fi network differently. And what happens is the network is infrastructure. And we are coupling. Our applications are touching the infrastructure. They're touching the physical or world around us more than ever before. So now what happens is the infrastructure, the network itself, can give you value-added services, information that's important to develop an app. And let me give you an example. So one example is indoor location. So when you have indoor location, everybody has a mobile device. Wi-Fi is on. Regardless of whether or not you've connected to the access points or not, the network, the access points know you're here. They know the MAC address because you're constantly looking for a wireless signal. You go out to a shopping mall, same thing happens. So what happens is the access points actually know how many 
people, well, how many devices actually, but how many people holding devices are here in the building? How many are here for the first time? How many have been here multiple times? So imagine what you can tell a retail owner about their customers just by having this information from the wireless, act, from the wireless network. If you take a look at your Web Summit app, down in the bottom corner of your Web Summit app, you press more, and there's an event map in here. And there's actually an application by Mapwise, mapwise.io. It's actually connecting to Cisco wireless access points here. And it's using APIs to show you this map. And then you can actually navigate. It'll show you there's an option to navigate to say, how do I get from here to stage two, or uh, you know, pavilion two? And then it's going to give you indoor navigation to get there. That's actually an application that's written on top of a wireless network infrastructure that has APIs to help give you that information. Other types of things that you can do is like a captive portal. So basically, you walk into a store or you walk into a restaurant like Subway. Of course, your phone clicks on. You know which people have been there before and who's not. You can actually give your loyalty rewards, like come on in, sign up for Wi-Fi, and then let me give you this other service. So these are a whole set of value-added services that actually come from the network itself. OK, next is security. So let's take a look at security. So it's really been the responsibility of developers to make your applications safe and secure and to make your data safe and secure. But as the world of cloud, IoT, mobility all comes to play, what that does is that actually expands the threat surface area of the network, of your system. So there's suddenly more points where your system can be attacked. But of course, it's very powerful. We want to go that way. Instead of thinking about the network as just something your app rides on top of, what if you think about the network as providing security for your application? And let me give you an example of something that we call open DNS. So one thing that you want to do is often like sites are compromised. You have malware. You have viruses that are trying to come in. Well, if you actually, with open DNS, you can go to open DNS, and you go to your home router, your devices that you have, change your DNS to go to these open DNS servers. Just set it to go there. That's connected to some backend security and intelligence that we have where we are collecting threats. We're collecting threats that happen in the network. And then we're shutting down bad domains where we find malware. And then what happens is we're actually feeding up information into the system. We're doing machine learning to learn about the patterns and try to predict where bad things are going to happen. We actually also have a team of 250 researchers, data scientists, hackers, security experts, who are also looking at all of this to basically find out and shut down these attacks. And then we're sending that out to all the network equipment that we touch to close those things down. So imagine a security threat happens in one place. Everyone who's opened up to this is now protected from it. It's amazing. For OpenDNS, we actually have 65 million users who are using this daily. And they're sending 80 billion DNS requests up to our OpenDNS servers. And we're using that to use cloud-based security services to then apply that security across the network. This helps your applications, your data, and your customers and your end users all be more secure. And we have APIs into the system so that if you have a system that's detecting security, you can actually send an API and say, I've detected a threat here. Feed that into our system. We also have APIs to let you pull out the threats that we know about so you can study that on your own as well. OK. And next, let me talk about multi-cloud. So we have this world. We have this divide that's emerged. We have a full set of enterprise applications that are actually being hosted on-prem within enterprises using data that's stored in data centers for these enterprises. It holds a lot of information about employees. It holds a lot of information about customers, about business. There's a lot of really, really valuable information that's locked up in there. And then in the other world, we have this incredible power of cloud services that's emerging. So there's powerful cloud services. 
and so many tools that are available with that, and the ease of cloud development is coming too. But the question is, how do we bring those things together? How do we let an enterprise app developer take their enterprise apps and use the power of the cloud? How do we take a cloud developer who's used to all the cloud services, but actually access the information that's back in an enterprise? So this is a relationship that we've just started between Cisco and Google, because the way that we're going to enable these multi-cloud environments is by having a network level security layer to connect these environments to ensure that as you're taking your enterprise apps and starting to use Kubernetes and containers and microservices, you're actually able to move those things back and forth between public cloud services, private cloud services, and keep these things safe and secure. So super important area going forward about how we bring these worlds together. Those old systems aren't just going to disappear. So very important. The final area that I want to talk about is Net DevOps. So everybody's familiar with DevOps, and DevOps is amazing. We're used to having DevOps to have continuous integration, continuous delivery, be able to like, take new code, deploy it, and then adapt the, cute, uh, uh, the compute resources across the infrastructure as you're moving these things around. Now that you have a programmable network, you can actually adapt the network resources as well. How many of your applications are often limited by and constrained by the network resources that are available. So here what we can do is actually take DevOps, bring in the programmability of the network, and let both the compute and the network adapt and be optimized for those DevOps workloads. And that's what we call net DevOps. And that's what's enabled by the emergence of programmability in the network. And with this, we actually have a number of things, like how is the network becoming programmable? Well, what happens is at the very base level, the network devices themselves are, in, are uh, actually getting programmability at their core. So the newest networking devices that are coming out, as well as older networking devices that have software updates, are having device-level APIs. In addition, there's network-level APIs that come in on top of an SDN controller, which allows that level of abstraction that Joel was talking about earlier. Automation can be deployed with this, and analytics can be put into the network with this. The other thing in Net DevOps is the emergence of edge computing. So you often kind of think about, when I'm, when I'm uh, you know, writing apps, I'm actually writing apps for the cloud or for a device. But now, as you have more things connecting to the network and the vast amount of data that comes together, you actually now also have to deal with the amount of data, the huge amount of data at the edge of a network. You don't want to send all of that data up into the cloud. You can't. So with that, what we're doing is having edge computing available where you can do analytics on the data coming in, connecting to the things that are connected, doing real-time stream processing on that as it goes. And that's what's going to enable this next world of IoT as IoT really takes off. And then the final area is application hosting. Now that you have that edge computing, that edge computing actually is able to host containers. So it's able to host Docker containers, microservices. You can actually then have a way for developers to program using those edge resources. And the other thing is it's not just little comp compute can actually put in compute accelerations with GPUs, CPUs, memory, all sorts of things on there at the edge. And what's going to emerge is the world that we all figure out as developers of how we compute in the cloud, how we compute on the device, and how we compute at the edge. So super exciting. So overall, I just gave you five areas that I think are going to be very important for app developers as the network becomes more programmable and as the network gains more APIs. There's the network performance, just the interaction between an application and the network itself that can optimize performance. There's the value-added services of data you can actually get from a network infrastructure that will help your apps, data that you couldn't get before. There's security so that you're not left doing the security yourself for your applications and your data, but you're actually using the network to provide an even deeper level of security and using cloud-managed security services to get intelligence from around the world and then be able to protect globally. And then the area of net DevOps, where DevOps is not only about compute, 
but DevOps is also adapting with your network and compute resources to allow that next gen to happen. And then finally, multi-cloud development that's going to bring together enterprise application development with the best of cloud development for that next generation of applications. So to learn more about all of these network APIs and how you can use them, we have a whole bunch of resources available for free on DevNet. At develop you can start at developer.cisco.com slash web summit. But I want to go back to the beginning in which I said, my parents experienced 50 years ago a lack of communication because there was no network. There wasn't this plethora of apps to where we are today. And I also have a two and a half year old daughter. And I'm thinking what her life is going to be like in five and 10 years from now. Because that type of progress that we saw in the last 50 years, we're going to have that in the next five years. And what's going to happen in her lifetime? So I encourage all of us as a community to work together. This is the full stack <laughs> session. And innovating in these spaces requires innovation at the network, innovation at the compute, innovation at the application layer, all around what we're doing in the cloud. It requires all of us to come together as a community to use these resources that are available. Thank you very much.